Well, good morning. I'm Pete Nigerian. This is The Take for Market Rebellion on this Wednesday, hump day. So we have a lot to talk about here. Yesterday started off the day nice and strong, gave that back almost immediately. First 30 minutes or so, suddenly we move all the way to flat. NASDAQ pulled back over 100 points in a very short period of time. And then the markets just sort of sat for a little while before we started to move into the later part of the afternoon, the final couple hours. This is a theme that we had seen playing out. And in those final couple hours, wow, markets really got pushed to the downside. As a matter of fact, the Dow finishing down more than 400 points. So a pretty aggressive move to the downside yesterday. We had volatility that had fallen all the way down towards 26. It got off of that number a little bit yesterday, late in the day because of that sell-off. But it's it's just been that theme. And we had broken away from that theme momentarily. But boy, it came right back with a vengeance. And that was that was really the story yesterday. It was financials absolutely getting hit to the downside. That was the, the struggles once again. You had names like Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo. We've talked about this chart many, many times. I still urge you to take a look at this chart because when you go through JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs and Citi and Bank of America and all the rest of these charts, boy, Wells Fargo, that one certainly stands out in terms of where that stock is now, where it was on the absolute lows of March and where it's been coming down from. So that's that's really been something that's been playing out for a while now. So that that's pretty interesting. But the industrials also pulling on the markets yesterday. We had the airlines pulling on the markets. You had names like 3M and Boeing, and we'd bring up Boeing and Dow all the time, but I'll even throw in a Caterpillar. So the one interesting aspect of yesterday's trade was we started to see a little bit of volume return. And that volume still about a million off the average daily volume year to date. But in terms of May, we started to see a little bit of that volume. Will that continue? Will that continue to pick up? Now today, pretty interesting trade going into the day. And, and a lot of that based around the early commentary we were going to be getting and hearing from uh, Jerome Powell, Powell, the uh, Fed chair. Interesting part was we were up about triple digits early, early in the session. Then as the closer we got to Mr. Powell's speech, we started to move a little bit more back towards flat. And then suddenly, by the time we got into the trading session today, we were down 150 points. We were down 250 points within a blink. And it was amazing how fast the markets were shifting to the downside in just minutes early on in trade. And, uh, and a lot of that pressure coming from all kinds of different areas. But again, financials pushing it down energy names pushing it down. That's despite the fact that oil seems to be trading pretty good right now. I'm looking at oil trading somewhere close to 26. I look at gold still holding on to 1700. So there's a lot of different aspects, but we did get a nice turn. We got a nice turn really about the top of the hour. So the first half hour of the day, suddenly we started seeing this movement, this shift. Now it really started with the biotech names. And those biotech names, you look at the XBI or the IBB, either one of those various indexes that, that, that follow the, the biotech world, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, a nice solid move to the upside. And with that solid move to the upside, suddenly the NASDAQ really started to dislocate. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pull it up on my uh, phone right now because the dislocation was very clear. So right now we're down close to 200 points on the Dow, 185 points. NASDAQ's up 23 points. That's a pretty big disparity. And what's really pu pushing that is not just biotech, but suddenly it's a lot of the other names that just started to get some giddy up in them, the, the Zooms of the world, but not just those kind of crazy names that are, are, are literally trading uh, in amazing levels and, and rapidly making turns and people just seem to be piling into certain names, Twilio and Zoom and some of those kind of names. But it's Apple. It's Microsoft. It's some of these other very big names, once again, that are starting to show back up again. So it really is a, an interesting move. And by the way, looking at this volatility right now, it's in front of me. It's trading at a 32. That's a 2% move day in, day out, every day, S&P 500. So we've already seen a nice move, but we aren't seeing quite that 2% move. So we'll see if that really can hold on to that 32 level. A lot of the time, there is some emotion that does get pushed into that as well. So we'll we'll keep track of that. There's no doubt about it. It's always interesting to, to see what's going on in the volatility index. There's, there's no doubt. And it's interesting to see that big move off of yesterday's lows to where we are right now. So Home Depot, another name that just, I'm, I'm taking a look right now as we're going, Intel. So you can see where I'm going here with most of the names. Now, some of these do stand out a little bit, but some of these retail names have stood out for a while now. The Walmarts and, and the turn that we finally got out of Target back moving towards the upside, Home Depot. Those kind of names really are 
really trading very, very well. And uh, it's amazing because in many cases, many of these names, not all that far from their highs. So it's been a really interesting recovery there. So I'm going to hit on a name today for some unusual activity for you. Stitch Fix. It's not a name that we bring up very, very often, but we do see this fairly often hitting on our systems. And as a matter of fact, we've had three hits in the last week in Stitch Fix. Now, these options are in the money, which is something a little bit unusual. So we talk about unusual activity. That's a little bit unusual. In the money calls. They're the 19 strike calls that expire in two days. Keep track of that. Two days. These expire Friday. So these are the main 19 calls. But the interesting thing is maybe the reason they're buying an in the money call, stocks trading about 1930. So those are 30 cents in the money. So why would somebody do that? Well, they get a little bit more leverage. They get a little more delta, as we call it. So it's going to move, in other words, closer to the movement of the stock. So this isn't an out-of-the-money call that, that is going to move a little bit slower. This is an in-the-money call. If the stock starts to really make a, a significant move to the upside, these will move pretty much, not quite, but along with that move in the stock, very close percentage-wise, especially as time starts to evaporate, which it is because here we are at Wednesday. These expire Friday. So they're paying about 55 to about 90 cents for these calls. It's just pretty interesting because it's hit three separate occasions since May 8th. So this does stand out for us. It's a pretty interesting trade. Now, folks, you got to understand how these work. You got to understand the, me the mechanics of the options, all the deltas that we talk about all the time. It's not terribly complicated, but there is some complexities to this that you have to understand. We've got great educators here. That's what we talk about. So in this case, I brought up delta. There's also theta because this expires in two days. There's all kinds of different Greeks that go into the pricing of the options. And right now, as I'm looking at certain names across the board, and we have plenty of them hitting on unusual options today, we might be on track once again to a pretty decent volume day as we did yesterday. So understand the options world, educate yourself. You do not want to have a bad experience early on, but this is not a guaranteed either because you have to understand as much as possible. You have to have a look for those opportunities, but nothing's guaranteed. We all know that. Folks, have a great day of trading. I'll see you at noon today on the Halftime Report. Jim Kramer, we've got uh, so many folks, the owner of the Carolina Panthers is going to stop in from Appaloosa. He's going to give us a few words of wisdom, and we've got others as well. So it should be a pretty fun show. We'll see you at noon today.